I'm Susan Curtis from Neil's Yard Remedies and today we're going to talk about parabens. Parabens are very commonly used synthetic preservatives used in cosmetics and in food. Although at Neil's Yard Remedies we have avoided their use for many years because we're committed to making our products as natural and organic as possible. By avoiding parabens we believe we have avoided subjecting our customers to a potentially dangerous and carcinogenic cosmetic ingredient. This is a perfect example of the precautionary principle. It has now been proven that parabens have an estrogenic action, which for some women will lead to the spread and development of breast cancer. The strong link between parabens and the spread of breast cancer has been proven by the work of Dr. Philippa Darbre of the University of Reading, who found parabens present in the biopsies of tumours taken from women with breast cancer. Let's talk to Dr. Darbre at her lab at the University. We're here at the University of Reading with Dr. Philippa Darbre, who is a reader in oncology here at the University, and Philippa's going to talk to us about parabens. Philippa, could you tell us a bit about how you got into the academic world in the first place? Yes, well I graduated in biochemistry, with a bachelor's in biochemistry from the University of Birmingham and a PhD from the University of Cambridge. And then I moved to the University of Oxford, to the Molecular Medicine Institute. I then moved to Cancer Research UK, to their laboratories in central London where I was for nine years. And I've now just completed 21 years of service here at the University of Reading. So for 30 years now I've been looking at how oestrogen, the female hormone oestrogen, can regulate the growth of human breast cancer cells. Because oestrogen is the one thing that seems to have stood the test of time in terms of its involvement in breast cancer and fueling the growth of breast cancer cells. And how did you link parabens with oestrogen? Well, I, we were, I, I, when I first came to the University of Reading in the early 1990s, I was talking with professors here about the possibility that some of these chemicals in the environment might be able to link to the oestrogen receptor. And, and that's now water under the bridge because we all know the problems of endocrine disruption. And it was in the mid-1990s in that context that I actually had an undergraduate student in the laboratory here with me um, who uh, just said to me one day, uh, well, I, in our family, of course, we think it's underarm cosmetics that uh, may deodorants. be involved, uh, the deodorants and the antiperspirants, mm -hmm. um, which might be involved in uh, the causation of breast cancer. And, and the only way I can describe that was it felt rather like a, a meteorite from outer space had, had landed on me. This was something very big about which I'd never thought before. And as I started to look into it, uh, the more I became concerned. We have... Um parabens that we can add to foods or cosmetics as preservatives. Tell me, are they exactly the same as what is found in nature? Are parabens found in fruits and blueberries and so on as I've heard? Well, we've got here on the shelf a pot, for example, this is methyl paraben. Uh, it's the methyl ester of parahydroxybenzoic acid. Its name is determined by its chemical structure. Whether it's in this pot here as a chemical, whether it's in food or whether it's in cosmetics, it is determined by its chemical structure. It is the same. If it's methyl paraben, it's the same wherever it is. You asked me whether these things are found in, in nature or not. I, I've tried to survey the literature on that one. And my reading of the scientific literature is that I can't find any good evidence that these alkyl esters, the, as we call them parabens, actually exist in natural products. There are some papers looking at things like blueberries and, and some um, carrots and, uh, and some food products and uh, all of them describe parahydroxybenzoic acid as being present. That's a, a sort of metabolite of a, of a lot of compounds that would be in our bodies. But the ester itself I can't find good evidence for that. And there's only a couple of papers I've read where they think they've measured it. And those two papers rather suggest that they're not sure whether it's actually in the product itself or because they've bought it from um, a supplier that it might already have been sprayed so, so with some preservative. preservative. Yeah. 
We've talked a little bit about the cumulative effect and the dosage of parabens. Is this the same as we've heard about with the cocktail effect? Yes, I think um, what we're looking at in terms of the causation of breast cancer is long-term, low-dose uh, exposure to mixtures. We know that the human breast now has hundreds of different chemicals in it. Some of them, the persistent organochlorine pesticides coming as small residues through uh, dairy produce and animal fat in the diet. Uh, we take in large numbers of uh, plant products with uh, phytoestrogens in. Uh, we take in um, a lot of products through the domestic environment. Our soft furnishings are sprayed with things and then the uh, personal care products seem to be filled with a variety of compounds which are estrogenic. So we're looking at uh, long-term, low-dose exposure to a very large number of chemicals which uh, get into the human breast. And clearly lifestyle is going to influence that. Different people will have different lifestyles, and so for different people the combinations may well be different, and different people may be susceptible to certain things more than others. So thanks to the hard work of Dr. Darbray, we now know, scientifically proven, that parabens can have an estrogenic action that may lead to the spread of breast cancer. And not only that, in June 2012, Dr. Darbray has had published in the Journal of Toxicology her new research showing that on exposure to parabens, a healthy cell can be switched to a cancerous cell. Yes, that's right. That means that parabens may not only contribute to the spread of breast cancer, they may actually cause breast cancer. I know that's one cosmetic ingredient that I will be avoiding.